enormous asteroids falling from the heavens. A massive solar flare toasting our planet. A nuclear experiment gone wrong. Or some sort of plague wiping out our population. If you've seen our video on the 10 times the world nearly came to its end, you'd know that, more than once, mankind has gotten so close to extinction. But here's a fun question to ponder on. What if, when Thanos snaps his fingers, he decides to just rid our planet of all of mankind? What do you think will happen to the Earth if humans suddenly disappear? Welcome to The Bestest, the channel that provides you the bestest news and videos you should know about. On this episode, we invite you to imagine a human-free world as we show you what would happen to the Earth after humanity vanishes. And if you imagined an empty, desolate planet covered in vines and animals running happy and free, boy, are you in for a surprise. So you better stay till the end of this video before you decide whether you're on Team Human Extinction or not. Before we start, make sure to like and subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell for more amazing videos. Okay, so a human-less Earth, huh? We know that mankind has a huge impact on the Earth. Gaping holes in the ozone layer? Our fault. The ocean's waters turning into acid and the ocean floors turning into garbage cans? Humans. And several animal species going extinct. You guessed it. Humans are responsible for that too. With all the ugly things that we've been doing to Mother Nature, it's only natural to think that with humans gone, our planet will finally heal. But the truth is it may take a lot of time before the healing happens and any sort of calm equilibrium is achieved. Humans have changed life on Earth so much that during the first few decades, it would be pure chaos. Just after a few hours, some of mankind's creations will backfire. Unmanned vehicles would collide into each other, ships would sink, and planes would come crashing to the ground. Just a few hours after we disappear, unmanned power plants would fizzle out and, after a chain of massive blackouts, the planet would go dark for the first time in centuries. The following day, Computers and nuclear plants will shut down on their own as part of their built-in security measures to prevent nuclear disaster. But oil refineries won't be as lucky as they would start to malfunction and cause month-long or even year-long blazes. And on the third day, drainage pumps would be abandoned and would flood the tunnels from underground rail systems. With no one around to bound it, the Big Ben would ring over the streets of London for the last time. After a week, the streets would be filled with pets and farm animals roaming around, desperate for food. With electricity gone, electric fences on farms would be disabled and billions of cows, pigs, and chickens would find their way into the streets. Give it a few more days, and the cooling water at nuclear plants will evaporate and their security measures would start to fail. This would set off a chain of earth-shattering explosions that would put the Fukushima and Chernobyl disasters to shame. The explosions will release toxic radiations everywhere and most wildlife in infected regions would die. A few weeks later, the adorable domesticated pets we once had would turn feral as they are forced to rely on their instincts for survival. Unfortunately for the smaller breeds of dogs and cats, they are likely to get hunted down by bigger predators. The farm animals that have broken free from their enclosures will have either died of starvation and dehydration by now or taken out by other carnivorous animals. After about a year, the sky would light up as the thousands of objects we've put in the Earth's orbit would fall back down like meteors. With no one to collect their data or continue to man them, the satellites we sent out to explore will come crashing back down to Earth. About a decade after humans have vanished, urban and rural areas would start looking like abandoned buildings converted into natural theme parks. 
the radiation from the nuclear explosions will have cleared up by this time, which would allow for vegetation to start sprawling across cities. A quarter of a century later, about 75% of the entire planet's paved streets and sidewalks would be hidden under thick layers of moss, wheat, flowers, and all sorts of vegetation. Entire cities in the coastal areas would be the first to get wiped out as they are reclaimed by the seas, and marine life would start to thrive on the sunken ships and structures that had become the foundation for new coral reefs. But even decades after mankind's disappearance, global warming would continue, leading to rises in temperature around the world and climate change. Still, the environment would improve drastically as forests thrive and expand, and marine life starts to recover from years of overfishing. At least a century later, most wooden structures would be gone. Anything made of steel, from cars to bridges and buildings, would start collecting rust. Urban areas would be restored to what they were before humans developed them. London would turn into a swamp. Northern cities would be hidden under layers upon layers of snow and ice, while the deserts take what belongs to them and smother cities like Las Vegas and Dubai in sand. After 200 years, the planet would be covered in enough vegetation to eliminate excess carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Forests would start to heal and reclaim continents. After another century, the biggest metal constructions would finally succumb to rust and decay. Once glorious landmarks like the Eiffel Tower would crumble to the ground. Two more centuries and the world's forests would be the healthiest they have ever been in 10,000 years. By this time, nature will have succeeded in burying majority of human existence. Most species of animals that will have survived at this point would bounce back in numbers. They may have to adapt to their new environments as escaped zoo animals would form new wild populations and they thrive in regions where they used not to. On its 10,000th year of being human-free, the Earth would have gotten rid of most of any man-made buildings. The only man-made structures that would remain are the sturdiest stone constructions like the Great Pyramids of Egypt, the Taj Mahal, and the Great Wall of China. But those and all our leftover plastic. Yes, our trash will outlast us that long. Even after 25,000 years, some of our plastic objects might still be found scattered around the Earth. Because of the chemical bonds that hold together plastic and vulcanized rubber, they don't break down as easily as other natural polymers. They also don't rust or corrode, Though, it's likely that many of these plastics and rubbers would have disintegrated by this time, the microplastics would still be in the waterways or would drift along the ocean's waters until they are deposited in sediments. When hundreds of millions of years later, and alien geologists finally stumble upon our little planet, they'd be surprised to find sedimentary rocks full of carbon-based particles that once were part of all our rubber tires and plastic bags and bottles. It's crazy when you think about it. You may be just one in 7.8 trillion people here on Earth, but 25,000 years is still not enough to hide all proof that you were ever here. Sure, it's not likely that we'd all just vanish into thin air, but after knowing just how permanent and incredible our impact here on Earth is, don't you think it's time you stop taking our planet for granted? What do you think you can do to help give back to Mother Nature? Let us know in the comment section below. And if you're curious about the times humankind came close to actually getting wiped out, check out our video on the top 10 times the world nearly came to an end. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the bestest, and make sure to hit the notification bell to access more of our videos. Thank you so much for watching, and until our next bestest video.